So controversy is all around us in the political and cultural moment in which we're now living, and that's why it's even more important for you guys to distinguish between what is ethics or ethical and what is the law and what is legal. So as we begin this module, um, think about those issues. So ethics in and of itself is the process of distinguishing right from wrong and what is legal is the process of determining right or wrong based on a specific ethical system and then meeting out punishment. So an ethical action may not necessarily be legal and a legal action may not necessarily be ethical. Um, law versus ethics. Okay, so these two don't always compute, but ethics informs the law but not always this way around, not always this way around. So, um, for instance, we might say in our patriarchal society that a woman who has left her children to go out drinking is bad. Right? We might say she shouldn't abandon her children. This is our moral judgment against her. This is our moral judgment against her. Okay? But as many experts, including Jocelyn Pollock, has noted in her book on ethical decision-making, we can think of this moral judgment as kind of the tip of a pyramid. Okay, And so, like, right here at the top is your moral judgment. X person is bad, X person is good. But then you might be forced to defend that moral judgment. You might be forced to defend this moral judgment and at that point you might turn to some norms or rules that you live by so you might say something like well um, a woman who left her children to go out drinking is bad because children should be looked after that might be your norm or your rule you might have one that says one shouldn't drink to excess that might be a norm or rule that you have these rules are often codified into law that makes them punishable by the state. <clears throat> so we call these kind of rules, norms, and they are punishable as laws. So these are kind of your legal rules, what we might refer to as the law. Sometimes they're codified, sometimes they aren't. Okay. For instance, all states in the country make it a crime to neglect the welfare of a minor child. Okay. But what if someone asks you why? Why should children be looked after? I don't know that. That was my Alexa acting up there. What if somebody asks you why should children be looked after? The answer to that question eventually forces uh, you to reveal your ethical system. And the ethical system sits right here, at the bottom of the pyramid. This is your ethical system. And there's a number of them. We're not going to discuss too many of them in this lecture, but we'll go over two. And so your ethical system informs kind of everything that comes after, right? So your kind of way of thinking goes this way. Right? So your ethical system sits here and informs rules and norms which inform your moral judgment. Now, most of the time, the debate we have in our society kind of centers here. It's a bunch of moral judgments flying all over the place. And very seldomly do we have a discussion of the ethical systems that are underlying our judgment. So the ethical system sits at the bottom of this pyramid, and there's a number of them. Your ethical system may be based on religion. You may have a religious ethical system, one that arises maybe out of a monotheistic faith. So... In other words, you may believe that God commands one not to drink to excess, and in many religions, not to drink at all. Or your ethical system may be based on utility, a system that we may call utilit... Uh, or you have a hard time spelling this. Utilitarianism. I think I got that right. Utilitarianism. Okay, Which says, essentially, that a system, an ethical system that... Uh, says that the greatest number, the greatest good for the greatest number of people is more important than the greatest good for the smallest number of people. Right? So you see this in movies quite a bit where they say, 
No one's left behind, even though going to rescue that one person is going to put the entire team in jeopardy, right? But they avoid, they don't have an ethical, they don't have a utilitarian ethical system when they go to rescue that one person. So they ignore the greatest good for the greatest number of people uh, in return for the greatest good for one person, okay? And that's seen as kind of courageous. So in, under a utilitarian system, a mother that goes out drinking, she may be having a good time, uh, but under that ethical system, by endangering the welfare of her child, she may be seen to endanger the welfare of her community at large, and thus her actions are unethical. That could be one way of thinking about it. And the utilitarian system also highlights how the law is different from ethics, how the law is different from ethics, because in the wrong hands, a utilitarian system of ethics can justify some pretty disturbing or abhorrent actions. Even today, for instance, political leaders often justify the genocide of minority populations with the utilitarian notion that eliminating a small percentage of their country's population through genocide will benefit the larger whole. Now, the law would find such a political leader guilty of crimes against humanity, whereas a system of ethics, such as utilitarianism, would probably not. Okay, So that's law versus ethics, not always the same thing. And uh, hopefully this will give you a good understanding of these concepts as we continue moving forward.